And the fish charge, don't move, Paul. And the fish charge this way, and he's buckled. So look at the point now. He's yeah. creating so a weakness. This, this, this is going to break. break. Yeah. And you have to understand one thing. Rod strength comes from the top section of the black, never the butt. The butt is just a hollow, covered, covered by the, you know, just just to hold the the, uh, the top section. Um, also. A lot of times, most of the uh, the rods that we have nowadays, they don't really come with gimbals, and because the uh, recess on the black magic is very narrow, the butt cap's not gonna fit in the recess. Get stuck, it's and you will damage the rod. Yeah, and a lot of times, if you want to get the rod up, you get stuck. You stuck. Yeah, you just have to snag it. Yeah, and it's you know it takes a lot of time. <coughs> All right, we're going to talk about uh, leaders. I would definitely use your carbon leader for roof and tuna as a top shot. Uh, it doesn't mean if you use a regular model, you're not going to get fit, but you all know the leader shy, they have very good eyesight, and you know, they can spot it. I've seen many guys here drop down sometimes to 40. Right? I'm not a big fan of 40. <laughs> but I understand. I don't want to lose a fish. I probably would go down as low as 80, but I wouldn't go less than 80. I would go 60. I know. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's no problem as long as it worked it work for you and, and, and you're okay with it. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of the Yuzuri paint. I used it in the past. It's stiff. too stiff, and it's not 100% pure carbon. Uh, you know, there's there's good line that comes in from Japan and you know almost not almost the same price maybe a little bit more expensive it comes in big coil and small coil uh, if you want to spend a lot of money as well you can check on the Varivas or the Sunline those comes like up to 130 pounds and the, it's 25 meters for the uh, uh, for the spool uh, the one I like the most is the Manu it's more expensive but it's you can tie almost any knot with it with 190 pounds, 175 pounds. This is what I normally use for popping. For the cape, I use 175 top shot. And for North Carolina now, I'm using 195 and 210 top shot with a twisted leader. Uh, when it comes into jigging, if we're jigging North Carolina, I would use 150, 175. The fish are not shy. Over here, it's totally different. And I didn't jig a lot, to be honest with you, in our water. I did this a couple of times and it was successful. Not very good at <laughs> And uh, Cape, there were certain years, it was amazing, and, but it's not, it's not steady. This year, the bike completely changed in North Carolina, and in the beginning, it was all jig. Everything was on the jig. That's what we can tell you. <laughs> he lost all, he lost good amount, good amount of jigs. So, definitely, definitely for your carbon leader, uh, and our, for popping, I know some of you guys are aware of the twisty leader. It's, I think it's a good system leader. It might sound a little bit uh, 
complicated. complicated. Once you get used space. to it, it is not that complicated. Yeah. Because think about it. I go on, let's say I go on, on a GT trip for seven days fishing. For seven days, I don't have to change anything. Nothing. You know, if, if I get shaved on the corner or something, or GT took me, I just cut that piece, retie the, the upper part, I'm good to go. The reason for it as well is uh, that twisty form really has good abrasion resistance against the body of the fish and the tail. Many times in the past, you know, it was a short leader, the tail, the tail hit the, 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 the main line, it splice it right away and you lose it. The scoops on the tail of the tuna or a GT is really, really sharp. If you have your feet and they slam, you're going to bring your toes. So it's the same when it comes to your fishing line. The twisted leader, when we double it up, there's more resistance. Do you guys have an example of one you could show? Yeah, sure. Uh, and Sam, you're going to talk about like uh, the hollow core. Yes, yes, okay. yeah, I will. That's, that's what's the I don't want to take a while. Yes. yes. Yeah. So uh, for bobbing, we switch. We use we use in the past the PE line, and we attach the twisty to it. it. Was a hollow. It was a little bit more complicated than this one, and there was we couldn't eliminate the breakage because of the of the velocity of the hits. The velocity of the hits, especially with GT, is insane. I mean, 100 kilo, 100, 100 pound GT, which is like 50 kilo, when it strike, it strike like 400 pound bluefin tuna. It's just a big wash, and the hit the strike is insane. And even with PE, PE 10 and PE 12, which is rated to 140 pound, the line on the initial hit to break it was still stuck. Yeah. When we switched to hollow, we eliminated that problem, and we start the, the, the successful rate went from. 20, 30 percent to almost 80, 90 percent of landing those big GTs in shallow water. And when you when you fish for GT in shallow water, you, you fish it with completely locked track. Not one inch have to go. Because I mean, some of you guys experienced some GT fishing. You know, you've been into a couple of trips and you know, and uh, as soon as the, as it hit, they go down to the corner and try to leave you, and you lose it. If you get that much out, you lost. Which here is different. The depths play to our advantage over here in scrape. But again, this goes against rubbing on the on the fish, like we said, against rocks. And this is the only friction with a cat attached for a, to a cat foul. And that's the only friction that you have. Basically, like that's the only knot that's going through the gut. And it's very, very smooth. When you do an FG knot or a PR knot, you cast with it. I personally open it in after six or seven casts, no matter how good it is. Uh, <coughs> through passing through the guides and many occasions, you cast with an FG knot or not FG, I would say PR knot, and you get the line get wrapped up around the guide over here. And it does create some friction with the guide on the back, creating a weak point on the line. And this is when you get that big hit with the philosophy of the line snap and break. So this has been eliminated by using the, the hollow line. And the hollow line uh, system was, uh, was the twisted leader consists on three pieces. The main hollow line, the root, and then the, uh, the twisted leader, which is attached to it, loop to loop to the hollow. And the top shot is your fluorocarbon leader of whatever you prefer to use. But this setup that we have over here, this is a typical uh, setup that's been used for, uh, for New Jersey. Yeah, we're going for the kill. So. <laughs> okay. This is at the end of the season. I went with Adam one time. I was like, um, I was at a safe that we can fish. So uh, I, would, I would use like 100, 100 pounds uh, for Jersey as a top shot. And the twisty leader. Uh, some use 100, some use 80. Bob, you like to use 80. Depends about the whole setup that you use. It really depends if, on the class of if, fish you're doing now. Yeah. What, what are you targeting? How big is the fish? And what, what are you using in terms of fluid? Sky is the limit, right? I mean, you don't want to go and put uh, 80, 80, pound, 80 pound twisty and you want to cast 150 pound popper. If I want to put 80, that means gram. gram. I mean, I would I would go with 100 gram max. So you gotta there's a balance over here. And if I'm using 6,000 size reel, 
was PD3, PD4 rod, that means I'm going 40 pound uh, hollow line, then my twisty should be 60 pound, and with a top shot of 80, I would say, or even 60, it depends on the size of the fish. Some are finicky. If you always have to balance it. Like I said, there's no such a rod that is suitable for, for all fish. I, I, I do have a lot of customers coming in asking me to load it up with 60 pound jerry brown, 60 pound twisty, 60 pound floor. I think it's a great setup for what we have here. And yeah. you guys have videos on YouTube on how to yeah, do yes, yes. We, I mean, I'm going to go through it now uh, just, just quickly with the... Uh, did, does anybody ever tie a twisty between them? Any, you, you guys do the twisty, okay, and the rest, I mean, I know my guys, the guy that fish was me, the fish. So, I'm going to do a quick one now, okay, just to give you an idea. Uh, Paul will help me out with it, stick your nose to it and, and see. It's a good time, like, maybe we can, like, take a break and... Okay, yeah, yeah, do it and I will prepare the stuff. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Okay. No. 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 Okay. Okay, guys, we're going to start with the twisty data. Um, the next, um, I think in like half an hour we should be done. It shouldn't take uh, longer than that. Uh, Just have a knot? Knot? Everybody has to do their own. I'm just going to do it quickly. You're going to need um, somebody to help you out to do the twisty or no. Normally what I do is I do it from the... Uh, do the prop like that. Exactly. Okay, but this is 150 pounds. I would be, I would use something like that for, uh, for the cape. If I'm using here, if I'm using twisty over here, like 130 should be, I think, the ultimate, right, Bogey? So, just make sure it's lined up properly on the bottom. And we start twisting and we bring it up. Paul like to do it by the... Uh, I use a drill. He uses, I, I don't like I don't like to do that. I like to do it by hand. <laughs> the whole idea... I know, I like the other way. <laughs> the, the whole idea for it is that w when you twist and you bring your finger up, you want to keep that distance, which is like almost an inch, a little bit, you know, the right spacing that you should have is three to four twists per inch. It should be a continuation for it. And you don't want to you know, push it all the way and make it really tight. There's a reason for that. You want that line to, to have that space to be able to stretch. That's the whole idea. This is your shock. Yeah. When you, you know, your main line is, is, uh, is, uh, is solid. I mean, it's hollow, it's not going to stretch. Clear carbon, we all know, is not going to stretch a lot as well. So this is your stretch point when that fish is going to, you know, punch and go to eliminate line breakage. Paul, well, can you go inside and get me that needle uh, that I use normally for the hollow? No, not this one. The pin, the pin. Oh, the one on the pin. And if this one gets shaved uh, during the fight, you can always cut it and save the upper part from the your car and uh, you don't lose much from the, from the hollow line. I know most of you guys use the hollow line uh, these days. And again, you know, like line break, you can always spice it. Uh, you can do it on board, it's not fun to do it. That's why when it comes, it, it does come handy to, uh, to have like two setup. I finish it just with a knot, just to hold it. And this is done. What kind of knot is it? Just tie Just a regular knot over here. I mean, just to hold it. Just to hold it. Just to hold it. I'm just trying to hold it right now. Again, Sammy doesn't use the drill. I use the drill. It's a lot faster for me. And uh, I usually burn the ends. Tie them out. I don't. Yeah. I burn the ends. The whole thing is to keep the twist together. That's yeah. all. And so you guys mentioned, like, if you take the time to make this, now you can save some money. You don't have to go buy, you know, a basil or whatever, you know. Yeah. Well, this, I mean, think of, I mean, we, we do some can use the shop. I hate to do it, it takes time. But if you want to do it on your own, honestly, I mean, I can, I can set up this all in less than five minutes, everything. Yeah. Well, it's just nice, like, you can save a few bucks. Like, of course, of course. You can I make mean, it yourself. It's going to be difficult in the beginning, yeah. 
But it's, it's all what it needs is practice. Used to do. Yeah, if I could do it, anyone could do it. <laughs> you, you, you find it oh my God. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> I'm impressed, Doc. Well, don't you do surgery on it? Oh, I do. <laughs> 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 This has to be as well, the length of it has to do with the length of your rock. You want, if you're using a seven, seven to seven and a half foot rod, this would be the, the ultimate length for it. If you're using an eight foot rod, I would suggest to have it slightly longer. Okay. Um, when it come, we're going to take this as an example, as if this is your, uh, the line that's coming up from your, uh, from your reed. And all what you're going to do over here, you're going to have a loop here. Just to loop like that. Okay. And the loop goes in from here to the loop. And once you hold it, you hold it with those two fingers right there. Don't twist anything. It goes inside, you hold it. Take this line and from the top. And now you have one loop here. And that loop, the upper part for it, need to be facing up. So you take that loop, put it again, hold it without twisting the line, okay? You open it, you take this end, it goes here, and this is the second one. Okay. Hold the finger, a little bit of pressure on it, pull the line, In, hold it without twisting, and this goes number three inside. I do it four times. So now you see how it's coming? One more time to go. So this is done four times, right? Put a little bit of saliva on it. Duplicate. Push it, and it lock. Okay. So this is the only friction you're gonna have. It's okay now. Do it later. We want to lock it now. To really lock it, you're gonna always work with the main line. So you have the main line with the needle. You don't have to go and spend hundred dollars on the needle. This is piano or one of those fishing creatures. Yeah, guitar strings work well. You open it and you just try to run it in between. My eyes, this one. <laughs> I'm telling you. You need, what you need to do, you need to lock it. So you, what, what, I, what I normally do, I go from the middle and yeah. exit toward the top. And then I take that line, bring it in, and then I go back again from the lower part and do it. And I will leave one, like, not even a quarter inch, just a little bit to lock it. And that's it. That's how I do it. I never had any single issue with it. As simple as that. I know other people like to have the inside out. They, it's, I find it too complicated, you know. We landed massive amount of fish on this with so you just zero failure on terms of line slipping. One time, that, that's what good luck. Bogey uses it, he fishes me a lot. Thomas uses it as well. And um, I mean, all the guys, you know, Andy used it, Evan used it too. So we don't have any, any failure when it comes into this. It's really a lock. And it, all of it, it's a strange thing that all it needs is like one time to go up and the yeah. more you pull, the, the more that the line end up pulling. Yeah, so basically just put them together and you want to have about an inch extra space so that you can hide the tech end. How, how long? Around two feet. feet. Around two feet. Yeah. Yeah, I like, what I like to do about the, the hollow, I like to cast with the double line on my finger. First of all, it's much easier. Second of all, if the fish get tail wrapped, you get that extra. And this is like if you're using a 100-pound line, now you have 200-pound line, you know, of 
what, like three, four feet. It's all that extra that eliminates, you know, problem than happening. Because no matter what, you're going to encounter a problem sooner or later, tear route or another fish came in and hit. Like in the past, it used to be a lot of fish we used to lose in North Carolina, not only by the fish, by the other fish to come into the line and, you know, cut it. And there's no downside in going further up the running line? At no, all. not at all. I mean, in fact, the longer it is, it's more comfortable for you because now you're having double light yeah. and yeah, that's going on your finger. Yeah. That's, that's, an an important, I, that's, I like, a, that's a very important detail. Yeah, I like it, I like it to have it like, you know, especially with, you know, when I go overseas to fish for big fish in, in shallow water to like, you know, GT. I like to have at least one round on the spool. You know, it, it gave me a little bit of leverage because you don't want it exactly on the spool. Sometimes your line goes, you know, on the spool, an extra line, you know, go, goes inside and you end up with single. You don't want to end up with single, yes. you want to end up with double. So having it slightly longer doesn't hurt. Yeah. So, you, sorry. so you want the needle to exit as the close as possible, possible to the, to the tip of the knot. So now I'm going to and you don't have to change this like every time. You can fish with this system for, for, for the whole season. months, two months, yeah. no issue. You can land four, five, six fish. The only time I would change it, I would change not the whole system, I would change only the twisty if I land like, you know, 250, 300 pounds under heavy drag and stuff like that. Because what happened is you're putting so much, with that cat's power going inside and you're pulling you're putting so much pressure on the on the mono line. Mm -hmm. So after two, three big fish, it might get weaker from that point. We, if, if it's done correctly, it wouldn't break. What we started in the beginning, we didn't do the cast power. We went, we went left to right, left to right. And we did encounter problem in the beginning with breaking line. But once we switched to this on the past mm -hmm. four or five years, it's been eliminated. Thanks to Bogey. Bogey, Bogey figured out. The better way no, I fished. I fished with a guy. I fished with a captain. In, uh, uh, again, you know, this is the, this is the thing. Is like when you go out, you talk to people, and, and you know, they gain from you, and you gain from them. So I was with Darren. It's game fishing India, and I was fishing in the Indians, and I showed him the system, and he was always like, "Oh my God, that's great." He did a little bit more research. You know, he's like, "Sammy, why don't you use instead of going this way, you use the cat's paw?" I was like, "Okay, show it to me." So he showed it to me. He's like, "Sammy, zero." Zero breakage. I said, I did have some breakage. You know, very few, but I do have. He said, this is the unique. We used it. I came in, I talked to Bogey about it. Came into the shop one day, we played around. You remember, we, we used to do the loop first. I said, okay, let's not do the loop. So we can go all the way to the end. So we did it this way and it worked perfectly. And since then, we've been using it with, with no issue. So now the tank end is hidden in the main line itself. Let them feel it, Paul. Can you use any other line? Okay, like, this is what the are the other options? So this is where your, 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 your well, trigger finger is. In terms of doing twisted casting. Okay, I, you know, yeah, the hard to get to yeah, yeah, but the one is strong. You got the hollow ace, like that was it last year. Yeah, hollow ace. From the sun line? From the sun line. From the, what do you call it, Shimano? Okay. I tell you now. I mean, I, I fished with the line in the past, I didn't have any issue, but this time, I got it, especially with the blue color, I don't know if it's the blue, I could not pass through it with this. I know, it was a hundred pound, and the thinnest one I couldn't go through. Okay, now, something will come up in the future. Glad that you forgot. I just want to mention something guys, for the guys that use the hollow. We've been approached uh, two years ago by Moi Moi from Japan when I was visiting Japan that they were interested to work 
to work with us concerning Halloween because they see things is changing in the U.S. and a lot of people converting from PE line to Halloween. So they start. They they give us some sample to use, and the first sample that I used came in like a year and a half ago. It was good, but it was the line was a little bit thick. I fished with it, we caught some fish in it, and then you know we told them exactly what we're looking for in terms of uh, thinner diameter and stronger line. And they came out with a new prototype that they sent to us that I fished with in the past four, three, four months, and I think this is going to hit the market. It would be it would be a good hollow line in comparison to Jerry Brown. If something <coughs> wanted to, those are prototypes from uh, Moi Moi from Japan. So even the Japanese now are looking the they're looking line. into the hollow line because they see what's happening. Now with the Japanese market and, and Japanese uh, tackle shop, this is not gonna help them. It's not gonna serve them because in Japan they're so big on you guys, you guys don't understand how much money they spend on fishing. <laughs> I'm telling you, you will be, you will be in shock. You see a Japanese angler coming over here with his tackle and stuff, and he will change line every two days completely. Two hundred, two hundred dollars line. He land one fish on it, or he doesn't land. He just strip it out, put a new line on it. Why are you doing this? Oh, it's better. This, they do it. It's not one guy, two guys. Ninety-nine percent of the Japanese angler do this. They change line like crazy. So. The, 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 the tackle shop is not going to be that happy to introduce this kind of line to Japan, I think. Because this is unbreakable. You know, I mean, you know the, the hollow line will last us. I have my hollow line, I think, since I got the new Stella, which is five years ago. I just you know, reverse it every two years. You know, if I have a break, very rarely I have a break. I splice it and it's, it's good, you know. You save like two hundred dollars on wine, and you can use that wine over and over and over with no issues. Uh, when it comes into jigging, I do like to jig with, with PE line personally. I don't like to use hollow for jigging, and the reason for that is that the hollow line itself is, is flat. And when you're jigging in deeper water, and your captain turned to you, let's say you're on North Carolina, marking fish in 300, 400 feet of water, and he said, I'm marking 300, 400, and you drop that jig, and the current strong, you're going to end up with with a bend on your line and you're gonna miss you're gonna miss the, the area of the water resistance. Besides, when you get hit on the jig in deeper water using solid line, I don't think the strike is as the velocity of the strike because it's been observed by everything. You know, the line is there. The, your line is not outside the water taking all that shock and resistance. It breaks. Uh, however, you know, Rogi hooked up a monster. He broke it on the run, <laughs> on the jig. So, yeah, when it comes into jigging, a big fan of uh, of solid line. And when it comes into casting, more into the... Uh, yeah, you're going to get to the bottom of the hole. Most of the PUI, they come with color, coated, you know, like every 10 minutes. So that way, it also helps you to know how deep you are. You're always, you're always going to calculate as well your jigging um, with the current and the, uh, uh, and the current. Yeah, I always give like 10 meters allowance or maybe even more because it's always, it's always a value, a slack. I just want to give you one example. We fished, <coughs> we fished last week in the OVX for two days. Boogie was with me. On the first day, Okay, it was a bit windy, it was current, and we were dropping 300 to 350 gram jig to be able to reach 250, 300 uh, feet, and we couldn't reach it. The second day, the wind eased down a little bit, and the current was slightly stronger. But if we drop the <coughs> same, same size of jigs, we, the line was completely straight, we weren't even in vertical. So we end up choosing to go way lighter, 160 to 180 gram jig. Give you a solid run. Just to <laughs> <laughs> All right, the jig type. Uh, I know a lot of guys here. I mean, you guys made uh, the F1 so famous over here <laughs> that now we cannot keep it on the shelf. But I really, I mean, definitely is a very, very good jig, and it's been productive for here because it's a casting jig as well. You can cast it. And I know Jake Wigley and all his crew has been 
Okay. Very successful was it, you know, the way that they did it. They didn't jig it the way they, they normally cast. jig They cast it, let it sink a little bit, take it sideways, they're getting a lot of fix on it. Um, There's a reason why the F1s and the uh, Z4 work so well in our waters, because they have a very slim profile, which is very similar to the sandals that we have. So anything that's slim will probably work. Yeah. And the bite on the past two years for us has all been what? Yeah. Right? I mean, the end of the season two years ago, two years ago, it was the butterfish. And you remember we did so good with the butterfish at that time. I mean, we slammed them and we did our own butterfish on the Pelligini and, and down south. But that change, and change of scenario, change of course. It changed every season, basically. Yeah. But uh, the Z4, I would definitely give a chance as well for the Z4 and the, and the beside the F1. Uh, the F1, they sink a little bit faster. The Z4, because of the body shape, they do flutter a little bit more. Can you see what they look like? Yeah. This is the F1s. See how slim they are? Yeah. These are the Z4s, so they have a slightly wider profile. Yeah. So, so these actually descend slower. More this, of a yeah. Wobble. It's more of a like a wobble, yeah. spiral kind yeah. of feel. This is more dotty. A lot of a lot of time, you know, tuna hits on the drop. You just, you know, I mean, you, you all encounter days. You just drop the jig and you get tied right away and you gotta close the bail and you're ready for it. And that result, that, so when you see scenario happening like this, I feel like the, the uh, jigs like the drift tune or anything that is flat that the flutter on the way down will work better than going straight down, shooting straight down to the bottom. Sometimes they're holding all the way down on the, on the, on the, on the bottom and the percent is there. And all that you gotta do in a scenario like that is have a slightly heavier jig that goes down quickly and take it and make sure to feel it and I feel I feel like you would feel it way better with with a conventional setup. Yes. And let that line go down with the jig is popping on the on the sand. sand. Once it pops on the right. sand, this right. is like it, Correct. You, you, it, it triggered it like a sand here trying to flee and going <coughs> and trying to go right. inside. And once you do, this is when you get hit. We encounter, you remember? Many times. Yeah. Many, many times. So, again, like different scenarios. Sometimes they're on the bottom. If you see them on the mat, then do the whole column. Don't, don't do it. Don't, don't, don't show you. Right. Like the F1 to the D4, I said, is really protective for our water scene in the, uh, New York waters. But the drift cube or uh, wider body, Jigs. Quick zero. Any, yeah. Anything, anything that's white, even the, uh, the butterfly jigs from uh, Shimano, those will definitely work as well. But if they are feeding on bait fish, yes. If they're feeding on bait fish, definitely wider jigs will work better than the steam jigs. Oh, are you, gonna, are you guys going to show the different uh, swivels? Like, yes, I'm going to jump into this. I'm waiting for it. Okay. okay. Now, Talking about terminal tackle, there is 